While we try to be as helpful as possible, this podcast should not be considered as professional or financial advice. It contains general information only, and you should seek out professional advice for your own personal circumstances before making any financial decisions. Welcome back, guys. I'm Julia. And I'm Nick. And I'm Ryan. And this is the Enthusiast Lab. Uh, Alrighty guys, welcome back to another episode of the Enthusiast Lab. Today we have a special guest with us who is Ryan. That's me. The big and man himself. This is the Ryan that's behind the cameras usually. So we currently have three cameras running and we are all just winging it, hopefully, hoping <laughs> that the cameras <laughs> won't die on us. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Um, so this is another episode of the special guest releases, um, because Ryan used to be a client of ours. I did, I did. So let's have you introduce yourself and yeah, then sure. we'll dive in. Yeah, sure thing. Well, I'm Ryan. Um, oh, fuck. <laughs> 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 I need to like, look at you in the nose. Like. <laughs> I need notes just to remember <laughs> who the fuck I am. Your age. <laughs> yeah, you literally have it right here. Like, I literally have age. How old am I again? <laughs> Yeah, so, 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 so oh, keep explaining. Oh, wait, who are you? Wait, no, we're, we're not, not, we're not <laughs> doing that. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, I'm Ryan. I'm 29. Obviously, uh, an ex or well, current client, ex client, friend, bit of everything. Um, first homeowner, still, I'm loving it. Uh, and yeah, I work at Komatsu. I'm a leading hand. Yes. And Sweet. you have your side gig, which is 3550. Which is 3550. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so let's dive into your build i guess uh because this was a like a while ago yeah. since then like way everything's back. grown in the way um, back machine like yeah, what julie like, likes to say okay. yeah. <laughs> see last time i said way back machine i, was, I thought you put like goggles on me like Ooh. <laughs> this time this time i promise <laughs> um so you signed up with nick before Nick was Mr. Enthusiast. Yeah, he was I just a uh, new Riding home. solo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was riding, riding solo. solo. <laughs> <laughs> um, before Mr. Enthusiast was a brand that we had, before we had a website, before we had an Instagram, we were just new homes. Yeah, ju just the Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, just the Facebook. Um, I was working back in displays back then. Mm. Um, this was... 2018. 2018, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Fuck, that's so long ago. Yeah. <laughs> what? Fuck, you've been stuck with me for five yeah. years, boy. That yeah. is not what you signed up for, was it? <laughs> Still trying to get out. <laughs> <laughs> cut, cut, cut. <laughs> so, yeah, basically, well, am I going to explain how I met Rai? No, Ryan's Rai going to do that. I'm, I'm going through my questions. Okay. okay. So, when did you sign up? In March 2018. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and when did you get your keys? Got them um, early the following year. Yeah, sorry. Wait, what? It's right here. I got them. <laughs> <laughs> we had to double check yeah. all these facts because it's been so long. It's been a minute. Yeah. Early the following year, March okay, as well. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so you've owned the house for four years and four months. Um, and have you thought about moving since? Because the clients that we are actively or like regularly talking to have either recently built and kind of had their keys for the last six months to a year yeah. or are still in the building process. They don't even own their first home yet. You've lived in there for almost five years. Have you thought about moving? I thought about it. You know, everyone kind of has their dreams and crazy ideas and whatever, but honestly, seriously, no, I love it. So yeah. yeah. It's been the best yeah. thing I've ever done. Yeah. Awesome. Fuck yeah. Well, you've also like with your house design, obviously we'll go into it a bit later, but you didn't just build a normal three by two, like a real small entry level should be right type of scenario. It was quite a large four by two of the theater. So yeah. it was a plan that back then when we were talking about this, you know, th this was with the ex back then, but it was the whole point of you can build your home, but also grow into it over a period yeah, of time. And, and one of the big things we like to explain to people is when you're building the homes, it's we're looking at a plan of action over a five to 10 year period rather than it being a get in and then fuck it off within the next year or two. So it's awesome to see that you're still growing into the home, you're enjoying it, um, you know, and we'll go through like you've been making profit and stuff. It's not yeah. something that you need to sit there and go, I need to fucking bail, yeah. I need something bigger, you know? 
which is awesome. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, I thought I'll give a little bit of a breakdown of like our journey as a friendship, really, yeah, because yeah. you're, yes. you're a lot yes. more than just a client to us, obviously. Yeah, I'm pretty um, sure I'm considered family <laughs> right <laughs> now. Right now. Oh, <laughs> fuck, fuck. Um, well, before we even get to that, how, like, before we go to how friendship, the first, so when Ryan was doing it all and signing up, he was obviously dealing with me directly. So the first time he actually met Julia was actually when we were signing up. So what happened was I met up with, because Ryan was working, was in a different job back then. Yes. Um, you were doing like landscaping. Landscaping, yeah. yeah. He was, FYI guys, landscaping, fucking pushing him in. <laughs> nah, so, so basically when he was doing the landscaping, he was finishing quite late. So I, I'm a stickler for, I'll fucking work late. And I caught up with him. He was living around Ellenbrook Ways, I think, back then. So we had a display home with my old builder that I was working with uh, down in Brabham. So I opened up the fucking display home late at night. It was about 7, 8 o'clock at night. Yeah. And we are going through it all, you know, and we are basically signing. So I went and ordered some pizza for dinner because me being me, I only eat once a day. Mm-hmm. And it's normally late at night. So, and obviously it was Ryan and, and the ex back then. But basically we were sitting down. So then I called Julia because we ordered some Pepsi. And I had no fucking glasses. The display home, <laughs> ironically, had no fucking glasses. So we lived like a few streets away. So I was like, hey, Julia, get your fucking ass out here. Can you get me some glasses so that we can actually have some of our Pepsi and Mountain mm-hmm. Dew that we ordered with our pizzas? I forgot <laughs> about this. I, I, yes. re- I keep thinking that the first time I met you guys was at your housewarming party. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. I kept forgetting that interaction. Yeah, so that was the first time when Julia obviously met him back then. And then after that, obviously, I kept kept in touch during the entire build process with with these guys and then julia met him again at the house one mm. which we'll go into but anyways just a little about the whole friendship yeah. thing um so yeah obviously you were first a client that then after the housewarming we're all kind of vibed and you became a friend yes <laughs> um and fr- friendship has like been going steady and everything and you've always loved doing photography you've always talked about you know different cameras and yeah. going on different trips you got a drone to do drone photos um so you really dabbled in the camera world for ages uh, but never really opened up your own business up until like what four months ago we did a client event and it was a um client cruise yeah. And yeah. I didn't want to hire our usual photographer for a client event because I felt like, I mean, it's a bit much, especially when most of the time we're all just going to be driving in our cars. So I said, you know, Ryan, do you want to just come grow your portfolio, take some photos? You're like, yeah, sure. Why not? Took all the photos. Came out great, by the way. Um, <laughs> yeah, came out killer. Yeah. And towards the end of the night, you and I like slinked inside because I was freezing out. And I was like, you know what? Do you, do you know how to do a podcast? Just, you know throwing the like fishing reel out and you're like oh i could look into it <laughs> so the three of us all came out here to the, the this exact studio tried out the mics and everything and within 15 minutes cameras were set up mics were set up and we recorded our pilot episode <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so the three of us looked all dodgy my hair's not done i was sitting there like the yeah hey guys all off. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have our light, light set up nothing um and after that pretty much 35 50 exploded it's a thing now it's a whole business i got shirts um, i got hats yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a, official it's official once you have your own merch it's official until it's official. then you ain't got shit um and we've kind of reeled you into doing all of our cameras set up um hook and line and fucking sinker <laughs> that is what we did we baited you and you um, fell for it I bloody um, fell for it so guys if you can give him a follow and a like on instagram that'd be awesome because he's not only a friend a client but also the businessman behind our business <laughs> yeah fuck oath. he's the one that's making this a possibility for you guys yeah. um the we can, yeah we can only do so much i'm more than happy to fucking spit yarn as much as i want to but at the end of the day without getting it all together and you know for you guys are watching on youtube and as well as you know just even on spotify like all the adjustments to get to where it is now that is 100 percent right no 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 i'll take it 90 percent is ryan 10 percent is julie because she's the one that's actually <laughs> re-listening to our episodes you get that 10%. Yeah, well, <laughs> she'll get 10 percent, and she's the one that goes through going ah yeah cut this or do this do that because don't expect me to fucking do it Nick's I'm contribution to this podcast really he is my says, presence no, is my on. godly presence <laughs> you brainstorm with me forget what we brainstorm so when we record it's all fresh to winging me. it yes um you bring your knowledge yep and my wealth of knowledge what yep that's it 
Wow. Oh. Ooh. Wow. Shade. <laughs> Just me being here is enough, Julia. You Your should. presence is a present. <laughs> <laughs> fuck right off. Um, <sighs> but yeah, okay. So, knowing all of that, let's talk about... That didn't, actually, ex- well, that didn't actually explain the friendship. How much of the friendship? <laughs> okay, Ryan, you tell me about the friendship. Oh, fuck. It's not <laughs> no, you know what? You know what? Fuck it. I'll do it. So, basically, we did start as clients. Um, you know, he was just a client. We got along like a house on fire. The house housewarming was gangster, so they actually invited us and me and Julie attended. Mm. Um, it was cool. Like, we, you know, shared a beer, met up with a couple of mates and family and had a good spit yarn. As we were leaving... Um, I was yeah. hoping you are going to tell this yeah, story. Yeah. I was going to bring oh, it up if you didn't. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> so, as we were leaving... Um, it was actually Ryan's mum going, oh, you know, I've made some some vanilla slices. Would you like to get one on your way home? I was like, oh, no, no, she'd be right. She'd be right. And I was like, fuck it. I, would, I don't want to be rude. Be polite. I, I don't want to be rude. So I grabbed one. By the time I walked out of that <laughs> fucking door, I'd already yeah. smashed that back. I was fucking obsessed. So I looked at Julia and I went, I need to go back to the house. <laughs> and I grabbed two more fucking vanilla slices. And that is... Still to this day, probably the best fucking vanilla slice I've been chasing throughout Australia. Mm-hmm. Every time I go to South Australia, I keep going and trying new places. So I am on the hunt for everyone listening out there. I am on the hunt for <laughs> <Yeah>. a better <laughs> vanilla slice. Till then, not possible. Till, <laughs> till not then, possible. Ryan Ryan's mum's homemade vanilla slice is fucking up there. But anyways, it's started with that. I'm so convinced our friendship in this podcast is yeah. just to get more vanilla slice. <laughs> <laughs> that was the whole point. Shit. <laughs> so, and then obviously over time, you know, we gave him the paintings, we got along and just, you know, we hung out, had a, had a couple of dinners, they came to ours for dinner. And again, friendships grow over time. Um, Ryan was actually, you know, from how close we oh, were, yeah. Ryan was actually, um, we actually invited him to our wedding, um, which mm-hmm. was in 2021 yes. in October. We yep. just, yeah. Mm-hmm. Ju- I had to double check with Julia. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> and Ryan was actually, he was obviously a guest, but also he was the fucking legend that actually walked our dogs who were the ring bearers, Mishka and Shadow, our two pups. He actually walked them down the aisle. So then he could actually give us the, the rings. So, yeah, fucking not just a, you know, a client turned to a friend, to a best friend, his fucking family. So, mm-hmm. and obviously everything in between. And now, you know, also we're doing some business together, which is which is awesome. So, I think that gives you a better summary of where who we're Ryan at, of, of who Ryan is. Fucking good. Thanks, mate. Ten I appreciate ten. that. 10 out of 10. <laughs> 10 out of 10. All right, now we can go. Now we can keep going. Did you always want to build or... Did you look into buying an established for a first or was building or like having owning a home, like not even in the scopes? Honestly, for a long time, it wasn't even in the scopes. It wasn't on my radar. I was just sort of working and doing my thing. Just do your thing. Yeah, pretty much, pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> and then, I don't know, I kind of just sort of like what I wanted to do and where I'm going with life, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, yeah, that sort of thought of the home kind of popped up. I was, yeah, I was never really keen on buying an established. I was, okay. yeah, I've always just kind of, if I'm gonna, you know, take the plunge and do this big thing, I just wanted to be my own. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though it still is your own, but you know, not from not the ground up. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's it. Um, and how did you hear about Mr. Enthusiast or Nick back then? So actually, my ex at the time, she worked at the bank. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. You forgot Bro, about that. Bro, that just unlocked a memory. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she worked at the bank. The bank that Nick happened to bank at. Yep. yep. And um, yeah. So actually, no, go back a little bit. Okay. So when I yeah decided I wanted to look at a house, I reached out to, I can't remember who it was, honestly, but another company. Wasn't us. Wasn't, fucking wasn't you guys, <laughs> that's for sure. If I did, it would have been the first time yeah. I would look at a house. <laughs> um, yeah, so I went, met up with them, sort of just wanted to see what like our buying potential was, what we could do. Um, and yeah, that happened. And then probably for the next three months, every fucking week, just bombardment, <laughs> harassment. Yeah. <laughs> just to the point where I'm like, you know what, I, I, this isn't right for me right now, yeah. kind of thing. So I was pretty, I was pretty well over it in my head at that stage. Fuck, and I, then I don't blame you, man. Yeah. It's fuck. Like you're getting fucking shit shoved down your throat. You're just like, fuck off. Yeah. So I was already nervous. I was just kind of yeah. just took the courage to reach out, and yeah. then it was just, yeah, it wasn't great. Anyway, so then enter Nick. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Cute Nick. Yeah. Walking in. My ex sort of comes home. He's like, oh, I was chatting to this guy at the bank. He's a, he builds houses, um, blah, blah, blah. 
I was just like, oh, you're right. <laughs> Here we go. Here yeah. we go. <laughs> I just got off the cooling list. <laughs> yeah. The Vietnam le- flashbacks are coming yeah. back. <laughs> At least when I was driving it, you know, I can just shut that down when I want or whatever. <laughs> but now she starts driving them. Ah, oh, fuck's sake. Here we go. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I've forgotten the question. But yeah, that's pretty much. Yeah. No, how did you no, know no that's yeah. yeah. How how did you know yeah. yeah. And then that's pretty much it. So then. Obviously, we got your details. I'm pretty sure she, you guys had already teed yes. up an appointment like the next week yeah. or the next day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, she called up and, and yeah, we called up for a bit of a spit yarn just to have a bit more breakdown because she did explain um, the concerns you had, obviously, with what happened. I was like, look, man, at the end of the day, fucking, this is what I do. It's up to you if you want to do it. Totally understand if, you know, don't want to give it a shot after being fucking harassed like fuck. But if you do, just like, I'm not going to sit here and be like, I'm different. It's just like, if you don't see that I'm different, no qualms. Like it is. I'm yes. different. Yeah, I'm yeah. different. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and on the day, uh, I like to. I like my actions to speak for me rather than me sitting there and trying to fucking you know flaunt to everyone. I am different. It's you know what. It's all good. Like I can understand. I'm not the type of person, and I haven't been, and I still will not be, even with where we are in the business, to chase people. Mm. It's like here's all the info. If you're keen, happy days. Oh. And that's basically fucking it. I didn't get to tell you yet. We oh, actually good. got a really cool message. I'm going to come back to my questions. That's okay. Especially because you answered the Fucking Julie's just <laughs> squirreling <laughs> like fuck. Squirrel! Here we this go. This is the whole point of this. Lay it on us. Um, <laughs> we actually got a really cool message. You're going to have to go to your phone. Go find your phone. I'm going to vamp with Ryan. So we got a message from a consultant that works in the Southwest Division. So not unlike the Perth Metro Division. Oh yeah, fuck. Watches right. our podcast no or way. listens to it, and it was positive feedback for like one of the very yeah. few times. So, for all of our listeners, quite rarely do consultants like actually compliment each other. You or talk to each other really, no, unless you're in the same group with them. No, I was gonna say yeah. If you work in the same builder, you kind of get along with the sales consultants. It kind of becomes a bit of a lads club. But when you broker out into what we do, where we're no longer part of a sales team. And we don't go into the builders' sales meetings and all that kind of stuff. We're kind of like a lone wolf. We're so. a fucking lone wolf. <laughs> 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 oh, fuck. Can't wait to edit that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's very rarely do, like immediately all the sales cons- like consultants out there building brokers, they all become harsher competitors for you rather than friends all batting for the same builder. Yeah, it's a very cutthroat industry. It is, it is on so many different levels. But yeah, so we got a message and he didn't, or she didn't, even leave their name for us. We can't I, even I shout think, them out. I but think it's a he from the way the wording has been done. But at the end of the day... It might be a they, them. We don't know. Fucking whatever, man. <laughs> 2023, guys. I don't, I don't give a fuck. So I thought it'd be really cool. That's I wanted to read that out. All right, I'm going to read it out. So to the person that did messages thank you by the way thank you i do fucking appreciate it so the message goes hey mr enthusiasts just wanted to reach out and say thanks for the epic content across youtube spotify and insta slash facebook both of you have an awesome level of of authenticity and transparency and the content is on point exclamation mark (laughs) i'm somewhat new to this industry as a rep myself uh, working out in the Southwest region. So this is for Perth WA Southwest. Mm. Um, and without getting too into it, I just wanted to say it's been awesome listening to your podcast and hearing you cut through all the noise and lay down the facts. Uh, mate, I hope I can be just as well-versed and transparent as you are with it all. Keep making waves, guys, with a peace sign. Peace. God damn, that's How sick. How cool is that, right? It's fucking <laughs> sick. Like, I forgot to give you that feedback. So yeah. just feedback on the pod and do yeah. a shout out to... Yeah. And anonymous <laughs> to to mr slash mrs slash they anonymous slash them slash them <laughs> yes that's the one um thank you and it really did make my fucking day um yeah. i i did respond back to it but basically what i was saying in the response back was basically thank you again for the support and for the kind words it does go a long fucking way um we have a lot of hate mm. on as mr enthusiast not big be- a lot of you know jealousy a lot of uh against what we do how we do things it it does shake it makes a lot of fucking waves and in the industry uh we have rattled many many fucking cages Mm. um so to see something positive from someone that i have no fucking idea who it is who has just started and to be able to even from what it appears like a little bit of inspo for what to what to do to be able to do their own business it's a it's fucking eye-opening. It's yeah. fucking sick. And I I really appreciate it. Um, 
And like I was saying to the person, it was basically the only thing you need to worry about. Number one is obviously to protect yourself. It's something that I've learned over the last seven years as a consultant. And number two, whatever you do, your client is number one. At the end of the day, everything revolves around the client. The client pays for the build, pays for you. So always make sure that whatever you're doing is in the client's best of interest. Not for yourself, the stuff for you will come in the future, mm. but it's always about the client and that's what we've done. And just be transparent. If something's not right, fucking call it as it is. That was a cool yeah. look. That was. <laughs> yeah. I was I was vibing with that. <laughs> hey. I'm um, sorry, I was just like... No, it's yeah, good. Nah, so you reflect that as well, which is great. Yeah. yeah. No. Um, well, but yeah, you. all the positive feedback, like all the, all the comments, all the messages that we get, we always um, share that with Ryan either at the... Like normally it's before we start recording um, whilst Ryan's setting up all the cameras and Nick and I are setting up over here. We normally like read out all the cool comments because it gets the vibe going yeah, it like reinforces 100%. what we're doing yeah um and we always pass a feedback on to ryan so you know just on the pod and see just, here. A, <laughs> just an fyi <laughs> yes um okay let's, right, let's dive back. back into it so uh you answered the next question where were we <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i'm reading i'm reading vamp vamp <laughs> um Loading screen. No. Yeah. <laughs> Elevate the music. Edit. Fuck Loading up. screen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you answered the question, um, where are you looking somewhere else? So you answer that. What? Okay, next one. What was your first impression of Nick? Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's a Look, safe zone. <laughs> we're family now. It doesn't matter. Family. 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 Yeah. I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna. I'm not fucking changing. <laughs> no, well, my first impression without meeting him, obviously, as I said, I was like, here we fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> first appointment, walking in, here we fucking go. Started talking, and my like, oh, righto. He just said, fuck, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't ready for that, but I'm down. I'm, I'm, I don't give a fuck. Um, yeah, and then you just pretty much started talking to us and just giving us the facts and my, all my questions. I'm can't remember, but I'm pretty sure I would yeah. have had a fuck ton of questions yeah, for you. Yeah, you did, which was actually quite surprising because a lot of the times in meetings, a lot of people freak out, uh, get nervous, you tend to forget, and then by the time you leave the appointment, you normally have the questions. You actually came with a bombardment, <laughs> um, which was good because like, if there was anything I didn't know, I was just going to fucking get the answer and let you know within yeah. 24 hours. So, but it was also, at the end of the day, man, the way I was there is still the same fucker that I am now. Nothing's really changed. Except for my hairstyle, I think, back then. Because I was wearing oh, short. Oh, yeah, I it was super short. short, short hair. Yeah, it almost looked like I was fucking from the army. <laughs> um, but anyway, so basically... Insert army song here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Give us a salute. <laughs> um, let's not go down there. Um, so, do you know what I mean? It's how... From that moment, which is awesome to, to hear that feedback. Because it's that's just who I am. You know... <laughs> It is definitely a bit of a shock. And I think people are starting to get used to that with all of our podcasting and episodes from YouTube, from our socials. Now that I'm fucking basically, I've let loose, mm. basically. I'm, I'm no longer leashed, so to speak. <laughs> I'm now free. I'm free. <laughs> Dobby is free. <laughs> <laughs> Dobby is free. Any Harry Potter people that don't yeah. know, well, anyone that doesn't understand the reference, please go home. <laughs> edit me giving you a sock right yeah. here. <laughs> Master has given us freedom. <laughs> Dobby is right here. Dobby is. <laughs> so, yeah. So, to be able to just be who I am and, you know, it, if it works, it works. And it, it, obviously, we fucking clicked and just fucking just had a good spit yarn, which is what it's all about, the initial. Yeah. And just we went from there. I will cool. say people still, like, especially in the building industry, when we do meet up with our builders and we talk to the site supervisors or the drafties or the things and they meet us on site with the client, yeah, hey, mate, how you fucking going? And the client, uh, the, like, any other consultant in the industry or any other like worker in the industry is like, hi. <laughs> yeah. you, like, no one understands how you talk to your clients because it just, oh, it's man. not a thing. Yeah, look, there's probably some conversations I will never be able to release on social media. No. <laughs> um, and of just the banter mm. I have with clients because there's obviously plenty of sensitive flowers out there, but it's no holds barred. Mm -hmm. Like, man, I will match your vibe. You want to call me a fucking prick or whatever? Fucking we're on. <laughs> oh, we're on. Challenge yeah. accepted. Yeah. Part part two to part my answer. Two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go on. So I think we said the point was probably around seven o'clock. Yes. This is the other aspect of Nick. Yeah. We have our mate, was like an hour long meeting. Sick. We start talking. Another 45 minutes. We start to exit. Get to the door. 
start talking about cars or something. <laughs> <laughs> Another 45 minutes. Start to leave. Let's pull out of smoke and have a chat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Nick busts out of smoke. Yep. We start talking. Another 45 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone's just standing around their cars Literally. going, okay, like my car's like yeah. right yeah. there. I just, I'm tethered to this man now. Look, I'm just fucking... <laughs> it's not like I was like holding people with a gun to their head. <laughs> like we were having a good conversation. Look, I'm just saying, you've mentioned I'm not putting a gun to your head two special guests in a row now. <laughs> you have to say it twice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not pulling a gun to your head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I love you. <laughs> trying to convince everyone who's not trying, like putting yeah. a gun to everyone. Um, okay, let's move on to the next one. What was the deciding... I think we kind of answered this one, but what was the deciding factor to sign up with us rather than, you know, doing more shopping or... Well, one, what made you commit to actually going ahead with building? Um, and number two what like what parts like influence that obviously because mm. you had a you had a bad experience the first time and i know we go along and stuff like that was did you ever rethink going cool this is great maybe i'll reconsider when i'm ready or i want to go and look at build established first and then look at it what was the go not to toot your own horn or anything but you know please even do, if, <laughs> please do. <laughs> even, <laughs> even if i wasn't mates with you i'd honestly say it's honestly because of you yeah. It was so obviously I had an interest and it got sort of squashed, and then it was just sort of my questions being answered. The confidence you brought in me that to reignite what I wanted to do more or less, and then yeah, that's pretty much it. it didn't yeah, they yeah. didn't for a second even go to someone else. Mm -hmm. It's either I build a home through you, or I'm not going to build a home. No, that's fucking sick. In other, way, in other words, you didn't harass them, which a lot of consultants do. They harass people who have inquired because yeah, they're desperate. They're desperate. Yeah, but th there's meant to be this like multiple touch point system and after a certain amount of time, you don't touch point with them. You kind of just saw the lead and you're like, cool. You either want to build or you don't. And you, you stick to that now. Desperate. <laughs> <laughs> but, but some of them, I think, because I don't know anything better as well with consultants. So they get shaped a lot of the times by uh, sales managers, mm. um, especially when they're fresh and shit like yeah. that. And look, I did too uh, back then, but I really did stick to who the fuck i am yeah and it was a this is the way it is like i'm pretty sure when you actually met me i was wearing fucking apollo shirt fucking jeans and air forces yeah. spot on, <laughs> spot on yep. look, look i've changed a little bit julia's really have has convinced me in that side um i do miss my my air forces but we're a vans team now we're are you wearing team. vans i am not no i don't know what these are get the fuck <laughs> out of here nick do a van shot do a no. van shot yeah. vans no. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta they're join the club now. They're fucking children here, man. <laughs> fucking hell. You gotta join the club now. The what are those? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're my sandals. <laughs> <laughs> my sandals. <laughs> um, okay, so what fears did you have? So the fears that well, most clients have now would be very different to the fears that you would have yeah. had because of the boom that's happened. Oh, well, actually, but did you have a price increase? No. No. Did you have a three year build? Thank fuck no. Yeah. Those are the two biggest ones. <laughs> <laughs> I, I looked at you, I'm like, where is this <laughs> going? Yeah, I, I was wearing the same thing. I don't know where it's going. <laughs> Big lad. No. Awesome the script. I don't know where we're going with this. And um, Nick has been on script again. <laughs> Fucking what, reel him in. What were your fears? Pro I don't know. I guess it was just my situation. My finance. Everyone's going to say finances. Yeah. But yeah, yeah finances. Um, commitment, I guess. Like. It's a big commitment. Yeah, it is. It's fucking scary. So even if you know, finances aren't a problem and it's all sorted, it's still just like, am I, am I going to take the step? Is yeah. this is this what I really want to do? You know, yeah. and that's not really something you can get externally. It's something you have to decide on. So that was a big fear. Yeah, yeah. But literally, it's just yeah, finance that. Other than that, there wasn't a lot. And I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna, it's going to keep fucking going on about you. I don't mean to do it. <laughs> Nick's I'm head just, by the end. Oh, yeah, yeah, just thank you. you. <laughs> 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 but honestly, it was, yeah, it was just. If I went with somebody else, I would probably have a couple of more fears I could add into there. Yeah, but okay. That was just trusted you, trusted the process, trusted your work, and it paid off. And it paid yeah, off. It was Perfect. Awesome. No, I really appreciate it. Like, as this is not rehearsed, guys. Like, it actually yeah. took quite a bit to fucking convince Ryan to get on. This is the third time we've begged it, him to come on. <laughs> even though he loves cameras, he's very camera shy. I like so. being behind yeah, the camera. Yeah, he likes being behind <laughs> it. So I, I appreciate you obviously jumping on and, and to yeah, be able cheers. to talk. So. And, you know, and to give your, your honest input, because obviously, yeah, yeah, we're mates, but, you know, it's it's so cool to actually see 
where we started to where we are now. Fucking, mm. you can't get, you can't, you can't replicate this. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's it's actually one of the biggest things when I got trained with sales. I like, keep fucking going back to this shit. But it was very interesting because a lot of the times sales managers that I was dealing with and many others always try to convince the consultants with sales reps, do not get too close with, with clients. Mm. In the sense that, because obviously you, you know, you get too friendly and chatty and you know, if something goes wrong and it can be, it can backfire this and that. And I just fucking went, fuck that right <laughs> off where, like at the end of the day, you know, you never know where you're going to meet a friend and where you're going to go from it. So well, I'll just fucking let, let it take its course, basically. It's like, hey, let's fucking speak. Yeah, there's some people that I did not get along with and we built a home for them. There's many that we have, like yourself, fucking, be, you know, we had many clients that first started as clients, like Ryan, mm -hmm. that we became friends and they attended our own fucking wedding. And yeah, like, I think we had five or six clients at our wedding. One of them was your fucking bridesmaid. Yeah. So do you know what I mean? It's like, it's fucking, fucking wild. Yeah. It's, um just to see how it all all develops and 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 that's the thing i remember julie saying in another uh in one of our previous episodes was i basically build the relationships with all my clients <laughs> nick's dating 200 other people <laughs> yes. um we actually had a really cool conversation with the direct from la Vida, um yesterday yes yeah um and he said uh because of our expansions and you know moving into Adelaide, he keeps saying that, you know, you should start looking at potentially hiring a employee or a staff member to start helping with the workload, either in South Australia or Western Australia, or either one. And or wherever else we end up going in Australia. <laughs> um, we kind of sat there and we're like, yeah, but how do you find someone that you click with? And he's like, you know what? The chances are the staff, like the people that you s see yourself working with in the future are probably going to be your clients because They've not only built a home, but they've built a home through you. They've seen the vision. They've had the experience. So they are sitting there going, I know what this feels like. And they're the ones that are probably going to be like vouching for a company a lot harder than what some Joe Blow off the street would. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay. yeah. I, I, I totally forgot about that. But that it makes so much sense mm -hmm. when you really think about it because... You know, the my biggest fear and why we haven't, why Mr. Enthusiast, this is one of the Q&As which we'll do, why we haven't expanded and taken on like 10, 15 fucking people. We, we can tomorrow. My biggest fear is that it will wash down what Mr. Enthusiast is all about, as well as the fact that obviously it's that personal touch with myself and stuff as well. Mm. But it's just more the fact, my biggest fear as a person is having someone else on that just, obviously I know no one can work at 100% capacity as what I do and it's taken me a bit of time to understand that. It's even with Julie, I've had to understand it's Julie has her own commitments and how she performs towards I work a business. differently than you. Exactly. You and that's, work it to deadlines, I work to a list. Yeah, and, <laughs> and that's what I'm saying is it's just getting used to, like, obviously, we are a husband and wife yeah. and having to work with it. And anyways, going back to the whole thing, so when it comes to potentially in the future, if it is, it might be one of the clients because they've gone through it, they know what it is. And it just hits right on the spot with mm. exactly what it is like. And they've backed it. the journey. They've lived yeah. it. They've so loved it. So yeah. they're 100% on board. Exactly. And they understand that, hey, if we need to do this because of this, they understand they've been through it and go, yeah. absolutely, let's try and help those people. And let's what can we do better? Rather than just being a, it's a job. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I think that's where it's going to be very different. But anyways. Well, going off of that, oh, my right. next, yeah. no, my next <laughs> question was looking at the overall journey, what were the key highlights for you? But you built before Mr. Enthusiast was a brand, essentially. We've been in the industry for seven and a half years. Seven. Se seven? Seven. Eight? No, seven. seven. Okay. seven. I don't know. You know the dates. Come on, Julia. Um, so you didn't get the Mr. Enthusiast experience that our clients now get. You see no, everything that I everyone know. gets. I've got FOMO. Bad, FOMO. Oh, bad fat. Bad FOMO. FOMO. Right. <laughs> sure. You get to walk the right office and you just like go through the merch shelf and you're like, I'll take one of those, one of those, one of those. And you like walk out like this bundle. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah. They never need to go to dust again for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not like you have missed out on the merch, but that's a like benefit that you've got because we're so close. What was the key highlights for you before you knew about our new service, essentially? I think it was the build journey. Like, I just loved watching it come along. Like, I feel like most people probably would make yeah. sense. But just the excitement of, like, what's happening, where are we up to? Oh, look at that. The slab's down. All the bricks are here. It was just the whole journey. And obviously, that the overarching excitement of the end of the build 
hand over, I get my keys, mm. I'm in my house. Like that, yes. just, the, the journey itself is what was just my highlight. It was just a good experience. Yeah. No, 100%. So we actually, <laughs> you've actually forgotten things. So when no, they, shit. That, he, <laughs> they, when they slab went down, they actually had a slab party. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Ironically, I, I remember. No, you weren't invited. So, <laughs> so I, I wrote. It wasn't, it wasn't me, I George, swear. <laughs> there's the door, go fuck yourself. So, I'm done, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so they had the slab party um, and they invited us. So I rocked up in the FJ back then. It wasn't as, as <coughs> sick of this. How many anymore. horsepower do you reckon it was then? Uh, it, no, it was about 750 back then at the tyres. Um, I ran that number for quite a while and then obviously it went to the 11, 1200 mark now. Mm-hmm. But um, so I rocked up in the FJ. A few people started looking at it because obviously it's a bit how you're going. Um, <laughs> rocked up, had a couple of beers with, with you guys. And you guys had the fucking you you pulled out you had the eskies you had the chairs cheese had, platter yep. yeah. you had a barbecue I'm pretty sure you had yes. a barbecue <laughs> yeah. Holy yeah. Fuck. yeah 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 had a whole fucking thing there was about fucking fifteen twenty people there and um I was probably there for about thirty forty minutes had a couple beers had a good speed yarn and I was like all right cool took a photo don't know where the fuck it is and I just went cool catch you later fucking then just kept going through the whole process so he still got you, look you didn't get to fucking tag your slab but. Even back then, it was something that was very pedantic about was to catch up for a drink mm. and celebrate. I wasn't really into my coffees back then. I was more I was more than happy to just have a beer back then. Um, we did that at your handover. When we came over, uh, we gave you the painting. Ryan was actually one of the first clients to actually get our original paintings before we went to the canvas prints, which was a full resin painting. Mm. Um, still got it on my wall. Still yeah. got it on your wall. So he, Julia... Uh, was doing it more as a, as a hobby and that's how we all started the handover gifts. The very, very first clients that ever actually got our <laughs> gifts wasn't handover paintings. We, we always did. It was a big thing for me. One of the very first few people, uh, one of them was a family. So we actually went and grabbed a couple of DVDs and did like a whole like mixed box. I'm pretty sure it was in the shoe box. And then we did like mm-hmm. a little fucking tissue paper and all that and just basically did like a random here you go. Yeah. <laughs> handover. My, my one of them had like a little, little garden, a little garden fucking seeds and everything in there for the, the favorite, family. The favorite gift we did that well, before paintings became and then paintings became canvas prints before Mrs. Enthusiast was born was a bottle of wine that yep. was bow tied with a hammer and it said, uh, time to get hammered. Congrats, congrats on your home. <laughs> time, time to get hammered. Time to get hammered. Love it, I, I love was it. so <laughs> proud it was of so, that. It was so good. <laughs> there was one client that was into cars, so we got like a little fucking super cheap and we just did a whole, you know, like sponges and clean mm. stuff, detail. So we tried to change it, but then we're like, fuck, this is getting a bit, how you going? Let's actually start doing something. And the paintings came came along and you got them. So yeah, yep. we had to stop them after a while. It just got a bit, how you going? But it was also because we noticed a few people didn't hang their things there's some motherfuckers yep no, they didn't hang correctly they didn't oh, hang, they didn't okay. hang yeah. it correctly oh, oh and it, and it yeah. cracked and it cracked uh oh, cracked shit. a floor tile yeah i have so many wall plugs <laughs> <laughs> i think there's like four and they're already the 60 kilos i don't know when that bastard coming down <laughs> yeah dead, whenever so. you're moving that painting's there like a perfect yeah 100 percent. it's not coming off <laughs> nah that's um, sweet um yeah. yeah let's move on to the next one what we've come off the question of um your overall journey what were some of the things or some of the challenges that you've had since moving in? I took way too long to get my paving done. Oh, so did we though. Oh, <laughs> the yeah. backyard. Yeah. I had a back sand pit. Oh my God. And my, my dog. Odin. Also, yeah. Little Odin. Odin. Little Odin. Yeah. Insert <laughs> Odin here. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh my God. Yeah. He would just bring the, the sand pit inside. Yeah. So the whole house became a sand pit. But yeah, it, it was probably the backyard. Just the, doing the, I mean, being a landscaper, you would think I would just do my own lawn. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Yeah. The fucking, <laughs> you didn't compute. It took, fucking yeah. logic. Yeah. It, took, fucking it took me so long. And then when we did do it, I got my dad to help me. And we did yeah. it. <laughs> I, I came across some like cheap lawn and it happened to be on, like a 42 degree day. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, well, I got to put it down. I was going to die. And then, so we did that. And then, yeah, the paving, t- I don't know, it took too long. But yeah. that was probably, yeah. That's probably the biggest one. Probably the biggest yeah. one. If you have dogs, definitely get your backyard done as soon as possible because the sand pit that comes inside definitely. the house is it's a fucking thing. wild. And you inadvertently always end up tracking that like on your feet into the bed and you sleep with so much sand thing. in your bed. It is so disgusting. For ages we had mm. like sand in our bed and I remember like I'd flip the sheets back and I'd be like whoosh, to try and get like <laughs> all the sand off every How's it night. Going? <laughs> <laughs> Insert whip. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's literally whipping me to fucking do it for her. 
Um, yeah, backyard, I would agree. That's probably yeah. the biggest challenge that a lot of people face after moving in. Thanks for um, agreeing with him. That's okay. Thanks for that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Second last one. What were some of the things that you didn't like? I was dreading this question. Why? I knew it was going to come up. Yeah, are you said you had the script. Yeah, I did the script. I was pretending we didn't have a script, but <laughs> I got the questions. But I, I'm I'm winging it. I don't I haven't even seen have the script. script. No, no, I, I didn't. It to you. you don't deserve a script. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just go fuck myself too. Hey Nick, there's the door. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> this bitch. <laughs> nah, you're right. Um. I, I don't really know. I don't really have a lot of things I didn't like. The whole experience yeah, was pretty good. The whole experience was a positive. Mm. Mm. There was no hiccups, no delays, yeah. no price increases. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it just went smoothly. Up. Like, yeah. how could you find anything negative in getting you, your first house if mm. there's no issues, right? Well, you went with Keystar, so you only went in with four grand deposit back then. Yep. So, um, and do you mind sharing where you built? Uh, yeah, it was <laughs> homes. No, 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 where. Oh shit! Beep that out. <laughs> yeah. So, so do you mind? So, oh, so, so location. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right across from your bloody house in yeah. Brabham. <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> hey neighbour. Um, 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 sorry, before the rest, because I was like down from my street was all established, and mm-hmm. I was sort of started at the next in line. So the rest of the street, and the same thing with them, their house backwards it wasn't built. I could stand on my front driveway and I could look and wave <laughs> at your driveway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. This is true. Yes. Yeah, because all of the... T- it was just all the, empty blocks Yeah, it was back all then. empty blocks. Yeah. We used to be able to see each other. Um, we've kind of led into it. Let's mm-hmm. actually talk about how much it was. Okay. So like House and Land package was, if so, you're happy to share yeah. that. Yeah. Because it'd be Go cool it. to I'm compare how much your house costs versus how much it costs to build it now. Okay. So while I talk about that, can you just quickly look up how much the blocks are now, so then I can do I can do a quick Ooh, quick numbers. We're vamping, <laughs> we're Ryan. You're gonna have to vamp, vamp. What do you mean vamp, vamp? Vamp is a term um, of like keeping the conversation going, so that the people that that need to um, do shit that didn't prepare <laughs> earlier can yeah, actually get so it done. The people listening <laughs> are still listening to something, and you just I'm really struggling to vamp and continue talking. Ryan, vamp. I've been waiting for mine to cut in. Hey guys, uh, yeah, my name's Ryan. If you are, if you want to build a house, I know a good guy. Oh, he's, a, he's a top mate, top guy all round. Top mate. Top mate. Ten, ten out of ten. ten. I'm, 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 I'm Jinx one three. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not a vampire, guys. Just, just, to, just to clarify. Okay. <laughs> I think I've got, I've got the website up for the land. I just clicked on the wrong link. <laughs> Nick, <laughs> you really threw us under the bus here. Okay, land. cool. Found it. You take too long. So I could I fa- have been vamping. I found, I found the block. <laughs> I found the block. Okay. I know what the house would cost roughly now. And then site works. Quick maths. Oh, quick, quick maths. <laughs> <laughs> Put numbers above Nick's head. Focus, focus. We're cutting some of this out. No, we're not. 100% um, this oh is oh keeping in. Work faster. God. So, so. <laughs> Ryan built the design. It was with uh, the design that he built is now essentially our. I think it's our prior the pocket rocket design, yes. which is now. So if you guys jump onto the website and look at the pocket rocket, that's similar. Uh, it's a very it's, similar it's design similar. to yeah. what you have now. To to what um, Mr. Ryan has uh, had built back then. So, fun facts, people. So in Brabham, this was in 2018. Mm. The block that he bought was about 210 grand. And the house, full turnkey. Drum roll. Sorry. sorry so sorry. it had, <laughs> it was with site works and the home, it was $196,000. So Damn. where does that land in, term, in terms of the whole thing? The house had air conditioning, so you had ducted. Yep. You didn't have pa- painting back then. No. You had to paint yourself. Unfortunately, so, I painted so myself. You yeah. had, you had um, tiles. Did you choose tiles? Or did no, you he's got floorboards. 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 You floorboards. got floorboards. So yeah. he's got floorboards included into his living areas, carpeted bedrooms. Mm-hmm. He has vertical, he had blinds, vertical blinds back then. Um, LED lighting. No. Did you do that? No, no, I didn't you do, do that. that. You, did that. you had you standard <coughs> lighting. <coughs> you used yeah, yeah. our contact for lighting. Right. Chill out. Okay. Okay. I'm getting there. <laughs> so Damn. <laughs> painting, flooring, stone bench tops. You had stone bench tops in your kitchen and all that and your scullery set up. Um, I think that was it, basically. It, it was basically, it, it was a turnkey home 
Um, the site works was already done. It's very simple out in Brabham. It's just very sand nice sandy site. Um, so your total home was about 410 yep. total. And that's a four by two with a theater on a 375 square meter block. House and land package. So house and land package of about 410. Right now, the block alone, and it's not even as close as it is now, but somewhere close by in the same estate, it's going for about $290,000. So it's about 80K more in five years. Jeez. The house, the fucking kicker here. <laughs> One moment, guys. Let me quickly redo those numbers because <laughs> I didn't think of that part. Too much vamping over the top of his thinking. I was. Have you I had, was. While Nick's doing that, have you had your house valued recently? Or have you had your house valued since building? I have. Oh, God. Now I'm going to have to do the math real quick. <laughs> okay. I got it. Okay. We're, we're going to cut you off. Yeah. All right. Before I, for <laughs> well, before I forget. Right right okay, quick. Before I forget. Okay. So your house was 196000 right? Oh, yeah. That's what I had written. The house that for him to build the same, same spec is $340,000 with site works. Whoa. So that is 150k. Jesus. More. Plus the block. So there's your 200k difference. To give you an indication, so if I add the 290 for the block now, it's going to cost you $630,000 to build the same house in Brabham. In Brabham. Oh, luckily I built when I did then, yeah. eh? <laughs> And, Bloody you, and you did it for the 410 coming. Yeah. What the fuck? No, I was going to say. Wild shit. I know Five that grand. you did value your house. Well, within the last I'm pretty year. Sure, yeah, I'm pretty it sure it was like low to mid 500, 500s, yeah. I think. It was yeah. around that. Maybe like 540-ish. Yeah. Oh, hold on. That was a while ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a while yeah, that ago. Was, that yeah. was a whole. And I, you guys time. have told me every three months since to redo it again. Yeah. yeah. And you haven't. I'm shit and I haven't yep. done it again. Yep. That but was that was when I re that's the whole thing. But when I refinanced off the key start after the breakup, yeah. yes, yes, that was yes. okay. That that was a, that was a hot minute ago. That was like yeah. two years ago, bro. Yeah, that was two years <laughs> ago. So that's I a haven't bad done indication. And, and okay, well, just forget the numbers I well, said, guys. No, 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 that's actually quite good. So back then it was about four ten. Let's say four twenty. Just fucking average it all out, right? That's what you built in twenty eighteen, and you picked up the keys in twenty nineteen. Two years ago, the she hit the fan with the with the ex refinance. Got rid of got rid of her. So then you obviously own the home completely now. Um, and the house was around f in the mid to high 500s. So you had already built fucking 100, 150K yep. equity, which then helped you get out of K-Start where you were. 100%. Yep. And then you went into, and obviously we, our broker, Steve, he's, he's been actually able to refund it to, um, with one of the banks, main big banks, dropped the repayments and also fixed the, fixed the That's rate. That's the best thing about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fixed it for four years. Fixed it for four years. So this lucky bugger at the yeah. moment is a lucky fucker. Yeah, <laughs> boy. He's, he's been able to still be secure on the lower rates. Again, it's going to change soon at some Thanks point. Thanks for reminding me. That's well, I'm here to fucking tell you everything. <laughs> so that was at the moment. And now to try and build the same thing currently in July 2023 <clears throat> as a bare minimum you're looking at about 630,000. Mm. So the going rate of most four by twos in Brabham in established is anywhere between 620 to 750K. Whereas we used to build these for 400, 500K. Yeah. It's fucking wild. That's so insane. It's phenomenal. And this is the thing is we weren't building there hoping that it was going to boom. It was a preferable area. It was still close by because obviously your parents are still in Ellenbrook. Um, Belladra. Oh, sorry, Belgium. <laughs> you were staying in... No more you, yeah. vanilla slice for you, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call your mum myself, man, and I'll ask for it. <laughs> and she'll, she'll, and and she'll, yeah. she'll make it for you, yeah. probably. <laughs> so if you are listening, can you please... <laughs> she, she already told me she's going to watch it, so... <laughs> oh, you made me vanilla slice, mum. No, Ryan, I made them for Nick. Nick asked for them in his podcast, so I made them for him. Perfect. <laughs> so... Basically, you know, we kept to the things that you really wanted back then, which was to stay closer closer by to home, somewhere where you can grow into the area, that you can get something a bit better. And now you're fucking just rolling in some cash, which is happy days. Mm -hmm. So pretty fucking wild when you really think about it. Where fuck, the funniest thing, and I'll never forget when mm. I did when I did sign up, um, Ryan and, and, and the ex. Basically, the cost of his home. He's literally up the road. He's fucking mm. not, not even 500 metres away from where my place is. Me and Julia, we built in 2016. Uh, we have a three by two of a theatre on a 300 square metre block. 320. 
three, oh, sorry, 320, 10 by 32. Mm -hmm. So 320, it had no stand, no, so it had stone bench tops, which we paid. We paid in for the, the extra in the kitchen only. It had no air con, nope. no painting. It nope. took us six years to paint. Yeah. <laughs> I taught um, it us. Mainly Julian. <laughs> <laughs> so hold, on. Comes hold out. on, hold on. So let me go back because Julie likes to butt in all the time. So it has stone bench tops in the kitchen. It has, it did not have air con, did not have painting. We still have three piece tapware, like hella basic. Mm -hmm. um, Silver. Really, yeah, really, really simple home. I don't have a raised garage, guys. I don't have a big fucking garage. That's where the whole concept really came from. It's a real simple three by two. And we built that for 420000 back then. So this motherfucker hey. was able to, and I was really proud, and I remember saying this to him, was basically he was able to get a home bigger than what we were able to with more inclusions for less than what we paid. And this was- And we the, were in the industry. And we were the ones <laughs> in the industry. And it was, it was surreal. Am I a little bit envious? Hell yes, because mm -hmm. you know you can grow into this home like what like what you're doing. You yeah, know what I mean, yeah. like you can, you know, in the future you can have a kid. You don't need to move out. Whereas with ours, it's so small, you will need to consider it much sooner. So, just fucking wild. And man, rolling in some cash, made some equity, made a fucking killer friends, family. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm just fucking proud. I'm fucking proud of you, man. You stuck it out. And even with all the shit that went down, you fucking stuck it out. And I'm proud of you, man. Thanks, though, bro. I really appreciate that. Hey? You're most welcome. Yeah, awesome. Well, I've only got one more question. Yes. Would you build again? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. I'm kind of excited. I mean, I've got no plans to do it, really. But when the time does come, I'm sure it will. I'm actually really excited to. Yeah, Fuck awesome. Fuck yeah. Um, before we stop, I've, <laughs> I've got one more question, and I think this is going to be more on behalf of the viewers. So, obviously, your your situation, you built the house, happy days, um, but you did end up, obviously, breaking up with your ex, and you initially started the process and built the home with the ex. So, do you mind if we just get into a little bit of detail about a couple of questions about it? Yeah, very good. Right. Well. So, obviously, when shit did hit the fan, and that, that obviously happened, you were still with K-Start, and... You, you had no idea what the house was worth. You didn't know what the fuck was going. You're dealing with a breakup. And they were shit. already living in the house, by yes, the way. They yes, had already done yeah, handover were, and everything. Yeah, Like, you know, the, the, it wasn't like, you know, you guys had just, you know, started, you know, just were together for like a year or two. You guys were together for quite a while and stuff. So dealing with all of that, in terms of the actual, what went through your mind in terms of when that shit happened, did you just think, fuck it, I'm just going to sell the house and try and split it? Or I wanted to try and keep the home and obviously try and remove her? What's the do you mind going to yeah, the yeah, sure. Look, honestly, <clears throat> at, at the very start, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't really sure, and it was a lot, a lot happening, a lot going yeah. on. So I wasn't really sure what the next step was. But that kind of just, I thought about it, and I thought of going back to uh, earlier, and I sort of wasn't sure about the house, and it was, and I decided I wanted to do it. Yeah, and just sort of like all the effort and work that I put in to get this house. Yeah, the awesome experience that I'd already had. I yeah. didn't want that to be ruined. Mm. So I just thought, no, nah, it's the house. I want the house. So cool. I just thought, I knew I was going to keep it. I wasn't interested in selling it. I wanted to be in my house because that's my that's mine, you know? Yeah. So I've had so many good times there. I'm not yeah. going to let one bad thing ruin it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dead set. And I appreciate saying that. So obviously you had changed by that stage and you're working with Komatsu and all that. So you were on a bit more belly income. So obviously for people out there that think, you know, that this is the end of, the end. It's yeah, the I was, fi I was a contractor end. at that stage when yes. I refinanced. Like, yeah. I was, I was nervous. Like, yeah, I wasn't sure. Yeah. I wasn't really. I didn't know anything about mm -hmm. the process. So. Yeah. Do you remember much about obviously because obviously she was on the title and stuff like that. How how did it work with obviously removing off the title and you know refinancing and stuff like that? How do you mind going a little bit into yeah. that? Um, yeah. There was. I know there's like a form we had to fill out. It's got like form eleven or something. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And that was pretty much like it's a civil agreement to, to split. Yeah, like an like a official but civil way to split it and amicable. We, we sort of came to an agreement with everything. Yep. Um, yeah, so I just went through the, the lawyer and just got that, made sure it was all above the board and that's what we had to do. Cool. And then just had to, yeah, put it through the, the courts, get them to work out because obviously you have to put in like your splits. Your whole your whole finances and your whole picture basically right. and make mm -hmm. sure it's it's fair like in yeah on both no sides. no one's getting but fucked over yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not forcing her to do whatever like it's amicable yes 
And then, yeah, just a little bit of a process to get through that. But honestly, it was when I look back at the time, I thought it was like the worst thing in the world. I was yeah. like, every day, like, fuck my life, here we go. But yeah. looking back at it, it was such a small portion of time. There's so many people that go through way worse situations. Mm. Yeah. So honestly, touch wood, it never happens again. But yeah. if, <laughs> somehow, if a magic word happened again, it would just, it just, just, yeah, get the right information, go through the process, and just be confident, and you'll get through it fine, honestly. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. And and honestly, I, I really appreciate it because I know there'll be a few people that might be in a predicament. Yeah. And yeah. don't, and can it, it happens. It happens. You know, <laughs> like, life's Fuck. life. No one plans for it. No, no yeah. one plans for a breakup. Yeah. You no. just got to have a plan no. when it does happen and yeah. if it does happen. Exactly. And I think it's having, having someone out of that, hey, there is light at the end of the tunnel. It is okay. You can make yourself. And man, fucking, you've blossomed as a fucking bloke. Both, you know, from, from friendships and from your own personal. Like, you know, from where you were to where you are now, just things happen and like, it's not the end of the world. At first it does seem it and- It will always feel like it's the end of yeah. the world. Mm. But, but there is like the end, you just have to, you know, draw like drag your way through it. Yep. And there will be something at the end just going, cool. It is worth it in the end. Yeah, 100%. And I'm fucking proud of you, man. Like there's, I know that there will be many people that will just throw their hands up. Yeah. And it's too hard. And I don't blame him. Yeah, it's, I can it's fucking see why. hard. It's fuck it, it would be fucking hard. But at the same time, for those that go, fuck you, I want to do it. I want to do the best I can to hold myself. It's awesome to, to hear it from you so that there is some hope out there so that people can understand that there is possibilities out there. Yeah. You know? Definitely. Um fucking appreciate you like sharing that. I know it's obviously not the best conversation to have. Yeah. But um it's all right. Fucking legend. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. And hopefully that answers the questions to everyone else. Yeah. There. Like, I think that's a good way to fucking basically end it. Yeah, well, I was going to say, let's start wrapping up and yes. go have some dinner. I've got sushi for dinner. Oh, sushi. Yeah. yeah. We always have dinner together after our recording sessions. We all drive back to our house. It's and our payment to win. <laughs> <laughs> it's our bribery. Food, <laughs> food and wine. Food. <laughs> <laughs> but we all go to ours afterwards um, and have some dinner, have some drinks, debrief. Like unwind and, and we're gonna hear how much is like. Why the fuck did you say? <laughs> 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 Ryan's gonna be there. Fucking didn't want to talk about that one. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's high end on a high. And obviously, thank you so much, Ryan, for coming onto the You're pod. Fucking legend. Um, Man, as, as, as hesitant as I was, like I appreciate you wanting me on, and you tried nah, this three it. weeks to get me and on, and I'm happy I'm here. I will <laughs> say, like we've recorded for. One Over minute. an hour. It hasn't felt like Over, that. Holy crap. Right? <laughs> Everyone sits in the chair and they're like, yeah, we'll be done in 20 I minutes. Sorry. It would never be there. will be an hour long episode. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's do plugs. So you can find 3550 on. I've got Facebook. Uh, I've got Instagram. Instagram is my main medium that I use at the moment. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just 3550, the word 35, the number 50. Yep. And cool. uh, you're starting to slowly work onto a website, but that's a work in progress. Yeah, yeah, it's it's on it's, it's on the cards. It's on the to do list. It. It's on the to do list. <laughs> yeah, famous words on the to do list. <laughs> Mostly just car photography at the moment. Yep. Delving in podcasts. Yep. Bit of video, yeah, a bit of other events. You know, just getting my feelers out there. Yes. Yeah, killer. Um, and you can find Mister Enthusiast on yes. on Insta, Facebook, TikTok, website, Google, YouTube. And our podcast, which is Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Yeah, step my game up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to play catch up, mate. Um, <laughs> if you can give Ryan a follow on Instagram, that would be awesome. And if you could leave us a rating or review or send us a message because obviously. Subscribe if you're um, on fucking TikTok or whatever. Just download. Just fucking support us. Yes. <laughs> just support us. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, lo we love getting messages yeah. and it really does boost our days up because yeah, it's really definitely. it's a really cool way to start our podcasting. I reckon we might start doing it. If we start getting more messages, I reckon we'll start throwing them into our episodes. Yeah, we'll try. Good idea. Right, so FYI people, make sure that you <laughs> send us <laughs> send them through. Um, Good or bad. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll pull them both Oh, in. okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're just going to get an influx of bad things. <laughs> <Yeah. ratings. laughs> so you put the them One in. stars. <laughs> All right, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> take back, take back. Um, and just remember, guys. We're not here to fuck spiders. Woo. Hey. <laughs> Bye, guys. See ya. <laughs>